Hello everybody, my name is Amir, I'm working for Anybody Technology and today I'm going to present the development of a patient-specific musculoskeletal model of a healthy knee to analyze hard and soft tissue loading. So this presentation was given uh, earlier this year at the ORS 2013 in San Antonio and I wanted to give you the chance uh, to have a look again at this, uh, uh, these uh, model developments we have made. So, uh, as you may know, the Anybody Modeling System has included a full body model which is very detailed in certain areas like the hip or the lumbar spine or also the, the new Glasgow Maastricht Anybody Foot Model with 26 segments. So additionally to our normal standard body model, uh, we developed a, a, a very detailed knee model that I'm going to present and this, uh, describe more detail now. So why do we need a knee model? Uh, there are several severe diseases in the knee and we need more knowledge of the function before we can start treating those diseases. The knee is a very complex joint with all its ligaments that uh, contribute uh, to the loading conditions and also limit the degree of freedoms in the joint. In vivo measurements are very difficult or sometimes even not possible in the healthy knee. There are some interesting studies from Bergman and Daryl De Lima out there, but all of them are looking into total knee replacements. There are also some interesting musculoskeletal models available with ligaments and several degrees of freedoms, but also most of them are using total knee arthroplasties. And I have to mention uh, the grand challenge here as well that uh, led to many really good models using using uh, knee implants. So there is no really or there are not really many musculoskeletal healthy models of a knee out there uh, that uh, are considering several degrees of freedoms. So the objective uh, of our study here was to develop an advanced model of a, a patient-specific healthy knee to understand the function of the knee uh, using force-dependent kinematics. In detail, we wanted to know how are medial and lateral surface loadings during different motions, how contribute the individual ligaments uh, force-wise uh, to the joint and to the to the whole joint uh, loading scenario, and how are the relative positions of femur versus tibia during different motions? So we started uh, modeling a, a knee bend. So uh, there's an animation I can run that. Uh, you see here a knee bend of our model. So the ground reaction forces were predicted by anybody using a function called conditional contact and instead of using the traditional uh, standard knee joint, we exchanged the knee joint into a patient-specific force-dependent kinematic knee joint. If you want to know more on force-dependent kinematics, uh, please feel free to look at the YouTube channel about force-dependent kinematics and also look at the, at the documentation of anybody. So as I said, we exchanged the standard knee into a patient-specific knee and therefore we got from a European project called the 3D Anatomical Human uh, MRI data of a subject uh, which was very detailed and very high quality data. So we got uh, femur, tibia, fibula and patella we got additional cartilage as STL, so cartilage on the femur side, but also on the uh, tibial side for lateral and uh, medial. We got also uh, ligaments, ACL, PCL, and also collateral ligaments uh, for uh, for this subject. So to get the contact forces in the knee, we defined uh, several surface contacts. Uh, we made uh, different uh, surface contacts with different stiffnesses in order to present, uh, represent bone-bone, bone cartilage or cartilage-cartilage contact and then also mixed bone-meniscus, cartilage-meniscus contact. Uh, those were different uh, in the stiffness that we used. So bone-bone had the highest stiffness, cartilage-meniscus had the lowest stiffness 
uh, and uh, so bone cartilage, 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 or bone meniscus, something intermediate. Uh, it's, it's written here, so for example, there are three bone-bone contacts, so one would be between femur and patella, the other one between femur and lateral tibia, and the other one between femur and medial tibia. And similarly, you can relate to the five bone cartilage, two cartilage, cartilage contacts, and two bone meniscus, and two cartilage meniscus. Uh, contacts. So additionally also ligaments were introduced to the model. So ACL, PCL, and as mentioned before, medial and lateral collateral ligaments were, were uh, added to the model. So ACL and PCL were represented as one uh, ligament, nonlinear uh, ligament, uh, described previously uh, in, in several other uh, publications. Uh, medial and lateral collateral uh, lateral collateral ligaments were represented as a string of three uh, uh, nonlinear ligaments. Position, so attachment points uh, were once again used from the MRI data that, that was uh, available from the subject. So when we look now at the results, what happens during this knee bend that we modeled, we could see uh, that the contact forces, so, so I can show here again, uh, I, a knee bend from 0 degrees to almost 100 degrees was simulated. And we got increasing forces in medial and in lateral, uh, in the lateral side in the knee. So a little bit surprising for us, we could see uh, that uh, we had higher loads on the lateral side compared to the medial side. However, we also found out that it's very uh, sensitive to how you apply the motion, how, uh, what external or internal rotation you have in the hip, for example, how are your feet positioned during this knee bend. So you can also, if in a different configuration, might get uh, a, a different loading scenario uh, for, for this uh, lateral medial components. When we look at the ligament forces, we could see uh, that uh, the lateral collateral ligament was not active during the whole knee bend. The medial, however, was and it was uh, mostly active at the beginning and then decreased uh, with uh, progressive uh, of the of the knee bend. The PCL was not active at the beginning, but then at around 50 degrees, it started uh, uh, to to produce high loads. The ACL uh, showed loads at the beginning, and then at 20 degrees, uh, showed uh, no active response anymore. Additionally, we could also see that there was uh, motion between tibia and femur during this knee bend. And here are two uh, static pictures, one at 10 degrees here on the left side and the other one at 45 degrees uh, of, the, of knee flexion. <clears throat> and the green line in, in the picture represents the tibial axis, while the red line shows the femoral axis of, uh, of the knee joint. And you can see at 10 degrees both axes are almost parallel while at 45 degrees the femoral axis rotates around uh, the or rotates uh, uh, regarding the, the tibial axis and I have prepared also a short animation of the whole uh, knee bend and then you can see that there's quite some motion between both uh, axis. So there's some sliding motion and then there's also some uh, rotation around a virtual uh, center of rotation. So when you compare the results uh, to literature data, uh, like there's a study from McPherson et al, which is however a passive model, uh, you can see uh, with several subjects, they measured a rotation from 0 to 120 uh, degrees. Uh, and we, when you look uh, at the anybody uh, model, 
uh, you can see the trend is similar. However, the anybody model showed as an active model showed a lower a lower rotation. However, um, as mentioned before, the trend is the same. Also, McPherson uh, at all show that there's a center of rotation here uh, on the medial side uh, of the uh, of the tibial plateau. So anybody as well had a rotation center on the medial side. Uh, however, we have not found out the, the real location of the center. So there are also some studies that predict or that say that the center of rotation might be outside of the bone. So that is something uh, we are looking at at the moment. So as a conclusion, uh, we, a, a detailed model of the knee is needed in order to understand its function and loaded, loading. So we developed uh, a detailed model. We could reproduce some known experimental results for validation. However, more uh, has to come and we have to uh, compare it to more data. Uh, we could get some insight into new facts, which is very interesting and we're hoping uh, to continue in that, uh, in that direction to find out more why is the knee acting the way it is, how are, is, the, is the role of, of the ligaments also for not only for knee band but also for gait or for other activities. So we have not released uh, this model yet, but we are thinking about releasing it soon. So finally, uh, I want to thank my co-authors, uh, Daniel Leute, Michael Skip Anderson and John Rasmussen and all the other anybody's uh, from Aalborg University and anybody technology. And I want to thank the whole musculoskeletal simulation community. Uh, and also the EU project, the 3D Anatomical Human, that provided us with this uh, detailed uh, information of the uh, of this patient-specific uh, bone ge and, and soft tissue geometries. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us uh, on our homepage or on our forum, uh, or my email address is aa at anybodytech.com. So please feel free if you have questions, contact us, and thank you for your attention. I hope I see you in another video soon.